ahead and dive into this. Um, Josh asked if I would just kind of facilitate this meeting um, since he's out of town. Um, we have with us Christina Romanelli. Um, she agreed to join us for coaching today just to talk with us a little bit. Um, so Christina um, is a realtor with KWXL. Um, when she came on, when she started her career, she was with the Joe Jansen team. Um, she's uh, more recently decided to go out as a solo agent, kind of spread her wings, and she's doing amazing. Um, she does a lot of business with younger um, adults, uh, has a great presence on social media. Um, so we might pick your ear a little bit about that, because I know a lot of us Can are trying you. to get into that world. Sure. Um, when she's not selling real estate, she's trying to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Josh put that. I was like, thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> this is your year. This is your yes, year. Yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> oh, finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, COVID has pushed her wedding and pushed her wedding and pushed her yes. wedding. <laughs> yeah. Three times now. So this year. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, so I'm just going to ask Christina some questions and she's going to um, just give us some information about what she's doing, what practices, you know, she's um, are working well for her. And then the last like 15 minutes or so, we'll just open it up if anybody has any other questions for her. Um, so the first question uh, he wanted me to ask is just what was your life like before real estate? Um, so I might be a little bit different than other people in this group, but I got into real estate straight out of college. Um, so I don't know the corporate world or anything like that. This was uh, my first career. And honestly, I think it was the greatest move that I ever made because I'm actually growing with my clientele. Um, so they're, you know, they all purchased their first home with me and now they're making their second move. Um, so actually getting into it, the age that I did has been wonderful for me. So I didn't, I was no different. I, I don't know anything different. I only know real estate. So I don't know if that's like a good thing or bad thing, <laughs> especially with the hey. market. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, but that's really cool though, that now you're helping clients like for a second time around yeah. you know and yeah I, get to, I literally get to go through each step of life with them we're all getting married together we're all you know we're doing all these things together and I think that that's why I've done so well is because I'm growing with my database and I think that they like that instead of having someone maybe older than them or you know their parents age helping them buy something that it's it's really it's been great so yeah. that's awesome <laughs> Um, so then what, what caused you to, or what made you, helped you decide to, to go into real estate? Uh, so my family is, if people do not already know, um, is Romanelli and Hughes in central Ohio. So they're number one custom home builder. Um, I was, I was going to OU at the time to go Bobcats, if anybody's from OU on here. Um, and I was taking, I was in the college of business for sports management, uh, thought that I wanted to get into the sports world and realized that that wasn't for me, that I'm kind of a homebody and really like Columbus. Um, so I was talking to my dad one day and I said, what do you think I should do? Like, should I wait another year, you know, redo my major? And he said, I think you'd be really good at real estate. I'm like, really? So what I actually did was I just started taking one class a semester at OU. Um, so then when I graduated, then I just sat for my exam. Nice. Yeah, so I think, it just runs in my, my family blood. Yeah. 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 Kind of raised on it and got to continue down that road. Exactly. You don't want to work for the fam, but you know, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what was the biggest learning curve for you in real estate? Um, I would say that the biggest curve when I first started was that understanding that I didn't know everything. Um, I very much wanted to be taught like, okay, A, if A happens and A, B, and C happens, and then if D happens and th these things happen, and I didn't understand that that's not really how real estate worked. Um, and that was very, very frustrating to me. It kind of felt like out of my control and I don't know, does that make sense? What I'm yeah. To like, I, I love processes. I love for everything to be exactly the same and to look exactly the same. And when I was learning from Joe Jansen, you know, 
I was like, well, okay, I did this last time. Don't I do this again? And he was like, well, no, this time's a little bit different. So I really struggled with the every day being different and learning new things every day. Cause I just wanted to know, I just wanted to like, well, okay, how does this work? Like, just tell me. And that's not exactly how real estate works. And I really had to like grasp onto that and be okay with it. Um, because I'm a very type a person and I like to, you know, have everything set in stone and scheduled and procedure and everything like that. But then I kind of had to like relax a little bit because that's not how the business works at all. Um, I really had to be vulnerable and be okay with like moving and flowing with how each deal changed. Um, does that, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, it does. And I, I actually personally, I feel like I can relate to that a lot. It's just like, well, if this transaction looks like this, well, why doesn't the next one look like that? <laughs> I, I really, exactly. I really struggled with that. And I really took it like, oh my God, I'm not good at my job. I don't know what to expect next. Or like there's these people who have been in the business for 20 plus years. I don't know certain things. And I really had to accept like, okay, Christina, every transaction is different. You know, I might, I'm going to learn something new in 20 years. I mean, every, yeah. it, it changes every day. So I really had to be okay with that. For sure. Yeah. I'm sure maybe some of us can, others can relate to that as well. Um, one thing I, I just want to add to that really quickly that I've learned is don't be afraid to ask questions. I, I think sometimes Josh is like, Chelsea, you, you're out of your questions for the day. Like you've asked enough. <laughs> But, it, but like yeah. you said, I mean, every it's, it's, everything is different. Every situation is different. Things are always changing. Yeah. And it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. And I actually was helping a newer agent here recently and she was like, well, why is it like this now? And I was like, um, just is like, <laughs> you know, and now I've come to accept that and I'm really good at that. I'm like, you know what, that, this is just what's happening next. And this is what, okay, everything's okay. And so then I just saw myself and her and I was like, this is how I felt before. And now I'm like, okay, whatever happens, I'm, I'm ready for it. Just bring it on. But then I was like freaking out because I thought I was doing it wrong. I was like, I'm I have to be doing something wrong. There's no way that this is like this. And it is like this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I think that was a great answer. Um, <laughs> Uh, where did, well, this might kind of tie into it. The next question was, where did you struggle the most in your first year? Um, so this is really easy because of my age and how young I looked. I really struggled with that in the beginning. And that was very frustrating to me. They're like, well, how old are you? Or how long have you been in the business? And I was, I didn't, I didn't know what to say to them. I was like, yeah, I've been in the business two weeks. I mean, you, know, you can't say that. I'm not going to say that I'm a new agent. Um, so I developed, well, my, I come from a background of being in real estate. My family is in new construction. So I kind of turned what I knew into like this nice bio for myself. Um, and honestly, once people let me in the door, my knowledge and expertise actually kept me there. But that would be the first objection that I would always get. Well, how, how old are you? Or are you even old enough to do that? Like, and I was like, okay. Because at first you, you know, I'm Italian. I'm a spitfire. I'm like, well, I can do anything. <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you talking about? But I really decided to like take a step back and come up with my, what do you want to call it? My sales pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't tell anybody that I was new in the business. I was never going to. My first closing actually was at Talent Title. And I grew up going to Talent Title with my family for closings. And I, as I walked in, my first client has no idea that I'm brand new. And I walk in there and they're like, little Romanelli has her first closing. How cute. And I was like, oh no. And my client was like, this is your first closing. I was like, uh -huh. no, no. <laughs> They just threw me under the bus. I have to accept it. Um, but I would just say like anybody ever has that objection for anybody come up with your own spiel and have it ready to go on hand and like rehearse it. Cause hopefully I look young for like the rest of my life. So they always ask me that. <laughs> right. Oh man. Um, 
Hmm. And then opposite kind of is where did you succeed the most in your first year? Um, open houses were what I, I just knocked it out of the park. I did an open house at least every weekend. If not, I did two every weekend. Um, and I, for whatever reason, if you put like me in a phone between somebody, it's like, uh, uh, like nothing comes out and I don't know why. <laughs> um, but when you put me face to face with other people, I am just like, I'm on top of it. You, I could talk to a brick wall all day. Um, and I think that's why I got so, well, so maybe about probably about half of my business the first year. And I only did 12 transactions my first year, um, were from leads that I got at open houses because I just talked to them. Um, so that is, that was, that'd be open houses would be the way that my success started in real estate for sure. Oh, Sparkle said, people always ask me how many homes I've sold. Um, so that's a great, that's a great, uh, great thing to add. I actually, since I was on a team, I utilized my team's numbers. Um, so I would just utilize either, you know, if you guys look at each other as a team with Josh's, Josh's coaching, I would tag onto that or just use the numbers in our office, um, and say, Oh, year to date, um, my office has sold, X amount of homes. Um, and people don't realize that when you say your office that you mean a hundred other people, they just think that like, maybe it's like your, your little team that you have. So I would, I would say that. A good like way that. on that question. That's, that's good advice. Just yeah. Lean on the others. Why? <laughs> Through your teeth. Watch uh, it. This is being recorded and it's on uh, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just incriminated your family. <laughs> as long as it's the truth, I don't care. <laughs> All right. You're doing says, great. You're uh, doing great, Christina. Keep it rolling. Okay. <laughs> uh, so give a summary of your worst transaction ever. Um, and then what made it so bad and what can we learn from it? Um, I would say... I have one in mind that the agent was just not the friendliest of people. Um, so I knew that I wasn't exactly dealing with the sellers on the other side. I was more dealing with an ego um, in regards to the agent. And I always tell everybody, like, we all have the same exact goal. We're trying, you know, to get to the closing table and we really just need to work together to get there. Um, but agents seem to just get in the way of accomplishing that goal. Um, and you really can't react. Um, my number one thing, and I learned this from Joe Jansen, is that reputation is everything in this business. And the moment that you mess up, I mean, the moment you mess up. Um, so, you know, you kind of have to bite your tongue. I'm the type of agent that wants cohesion and everyone to get along. And, you know, even if, for example, you have a listing and the buyer has said that they wouldn't do or wouldn't ask for any request for remedy and they come back at you with a request for remedy. I'm not the type of agent to just start yelling, right? Like, well, you said this and that's, you know, that's what you wrote in this contract and blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to present it. Um, I don't take that approach. Uh, I kind of try to keep the peace with everybody. So even if they do give me a request for remedy and I say, well, you know, we really, we, that's the reason why we accepted your offers because we weren't going to ask for any remedies and you know we really don't have the cash to do that i still will take it to my clients and just say here here's here's kind of what happened um here's what they're requesting how do we feel about that and i can most definitely go back to them and just tell them that you know we're no longer interested and go back to you know go to the next offer i think that you really just need to keep the peace so i would just say keep egos out of it um i don't care how many deals you do, I think it's all about reputation. And I've gotten even so many like deals where I was the backup offer and I was the backup offer just because I was nice. Um, and they call me back two to three weeks later because the other one backed out and they're like, you were just so nice to talk to on the phone. You know, whether or not I was the best, they give me the chance. So I would just say worst transaction I ever had is not with bad clients. It's more with egos um and you just kind of want to set that aside yeah 
right. um, in a few sentences, in your opinion, what makes a good realtor? Um, I would say being well-rounded. Um, I have met a lot of other realtors that maybe don't have a lot of knowledge in like construction, for example, or how sump pumps work or, you know, Boeing foundations, or I really take pride in knowing construction about homes because I could walk into a basement and say, okay, this is how much this is going to, this is going to be roughly around what this is going to cost you because I've seen it before. And I have vendors in my back pocket that I use all the time. And I actually think that that's why people hire me is because I know a little bit more about construction and be able to, you know, keep my eye out for a lipstick on a pig, for example. Um, Cause I know that sometimes they look gorgeous, but you know, your clients are going to have a really tough time once they move in there with all the small problems that they're going to have. And I think if you're, you know, well-versed in that, I think you need to be dangerous in lending, right? We're not the lender. I'm not telling you to be the lender. Um, but if you kind of understand different loan programs and how the lending process works, for example, right now with these appraisal gap coverages, for example, you know, our clients only have so much cash, right? I mean, we can't do it all. Um, but I've been able to, how about we roll closing costs into the loan so then they have more cash on hand to be able to gap an appraisal. Well, I've had other realtors that never thought about that, right? So you just need to be like a little bit more dangerous in regards to different topics. Um, so you can help your clients write good offers uh, because especially in this market, I mean, they need cash on hand and it's like, well, how else can we get it for them? Um, so I would say just kind of be a little bit dangerous and, you know, lending, construction, inspections, knowing the right vendors. Um, I will also say that I check the hot sheet probably more often than I probably should. So I know everything that's on the market. So if someone ever asks me and I don't have my phone on me, I can talk to what home that they're just, you know, they're brought up, whether or not I know every detail about it. And I'd be like, oh yeah, my, uh, my neighbor's house just went on the market and I know where they live. I'm like, oh, is it the one on so-and-so street? And all of a sudden I look like a champion. And that's just because I checked the hot sheet that morning. So um, I would say check the hot sheet every morning. That would be one thing that I would recommend. Thanks. Yeah. Uh uh, just to, um, along with the inspection and knowledge and stuff that you were talking about, um, I don't know if any of you have, but, um, and, and I checked with the inspector first, but the first couple of homes that I had um, go into contract, I actually kind of, I don't want to say tagged along, I wasn't there the whole time, um, but I did go out to those properties, and I know you don't typically as an agent need to go over for inspection, but I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge of like some pumps and the way like certain things work. So I did go over and Tony Diller with Dwell Inspections, if you ever need one, he's fantastic. Um, I went over with him and he was super accommodating and taught me so much stuff in such a small period of time that now I do feel more comfortable, you know, when I'm showing homes and questions are asked, like, I have more knowledgeable answers to give them. And it's not so much of the, oh, I don't know. I'll have to check. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to check. Yeah. Oh, I don't know that either. I'll have to check. <laughs> yeah. Or even like if you, when you get a home inspection report and you don't, whether or not it's an issue that's coming up in the home, home inspection report, you're just like, you know, I would just like to know the answer to this. Or like, if this is a major concern, just reach out to your home inspector. I have one home inspector or two that I like love, and I can call them with any questions that I have about the home inspection, hmm. whether or not it's pertinent to that deal or not. I'm just like, Hey, I just like, don't know what this is or what does exactly that mean? So then I can be dangerous for the next deal. Um, and especially right now, and I don't advise it and I don't love it, but with buyers having to waive inspections, because I know that we've all seen it, um, I'm able to be like, <laughs> I, you know, I don't think that we should do that for this house. I think that there might be some underlying issues. I'd rather us keep it in there. And if we don't get it, we don't get it. Um, but in the chance that, you know, you can't have a home inspection, right? And your clients love it, at least you're dangerous enough to go in there and say, okay, well, this furnace looks old. I have this guy that can come out and just quote, you know, the cost of it. Um, I know about backflow enough. I know that that's going to be more expensive than, you know, like just be dangerous, especially to get through the way that this market is, because 
they're not fixing anything. So as long as you go in there and say, hey, so, okay, we're counting this as a cost, this as a cost, this as a cost for when you move in, are you comfortable with that, right? Instead of the home inspection coming back, all of a sudden it's a disaster. You kind of, I bring it up up front. I'm like, well, I think this is going to be bad. And I think this is going to be bad. Are you okay with that? Yep. Because then it's less shocking when the home inspection comes back and it's this long and you're like, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know. And I'm like, well, I, but they don't do that to me because I told them, I said, this might be a problem. This, so it's not, it's less scary. So it helps keep the deal back together. Great. Yeah. Um, why have you been successful so far in your career and how would you define your success? Um, I would say that I still have not reached success. I think I, that's my problem or a good and bad part thing about me. Um, I strive for something every day. So I wouldn't say that I've been successful just yet. I mean, I know that I have, but it's like, you every day. yeah, it's just like one more, let's two more, let's just keep going. Yeah. Um, I would say the reason why I'm successful is because I really take care of my past clients in my database. I would say that that's kind of like my money maker for sure. Um, I'm really not a cold call person and I really, really wish that I was, but I just, am not going to lie to myself. I I'm not. Um, so I, all my referrals, they all get Starbucks gift cards anytime I get a referral. And honestly, the amount of referrals that I get is kind of like, I can't do it all. Um, and that's great because I've created this like atmosphere around me that people want to be in my group, right? People want to do real estate with Christina because everyone's so happy and it's such a, it's such a thing. And, um, I do home, I do housewarming parties for all of my clients that want one. So then I can like, they're like, Oh, I want my realtor to do a housewarming party for me. And then I'm the realtor. So it's like, I kind of created this like atmosphere. Um, that's which really is cool. Super helpful, helpful, and the reason for my success because I'm honestly at a point where I'm not looking for new business; it's just coming to me, and that's like the that's an yeah, that's a success oh, in itself. Like, my phone just goes, "Hey, I need a realtor." Oh, great, I have it. <laughs> me. Um, so if you take care of your database, it'll it'll show up for sure. It's not going to yeah. show up right away, trust me, because this is what my sixth year in the business, and it started maybe two years ago where things were just flowing to me. So mm -hmm. it definitely didn't happen right in the beginning, but if you focus on it, you will do great things. And the first thing that I did when I got into the business was created a database because our old admin made me do it. And she was like, if you take care of this, you will be amazing. And I was like, oh God, okay. So like I, and I even accidentally deleted the whole entire one after I was finished. And I was like, pulling my hair out. So I focused on it. And now I have this awesome database that I know when I've touched everybody, I have their home anniversary. I have, I have everything. So that has really, really, really been helpful and probably the best advice that I ever got when I first got the business. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, something that spoke to me during, um, I think it was during family reunion, um, just about success that I mean, obviously we all have our own idea of what success is for ourselves and it's not going to happen overnight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like Christina said, I mean, it's taken her years to get where she is. Um, but there was a story about um, a child that was doing Special Olympics. But anyway, he his like mindset, his motto was 1% every day. If I can be 1% better every day. And I just, it, that really spoke to me because I have that mindset of like, no, I need to be a hundred percent better every day. But if you break it down and you just think about, I need to be 1% better every day. I actually maybe wrote that Christina. in my notebook when he said it. So yeah. that stuck out to me too. I'm like, just 1%. That's all I got to do. Yeah. Like, I don't need to recreate the wheel tomorrow. I just right. need 1% better. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, the last one that he has for us is give a snapshot of your daily schedule. And then how do you find time to fit things, you know, fun things in? Um, so I won't lie. I recently just hit my wall. Um, I hit my real estate wall hard and I was told in the beginning of the being in the business that like, you need to, Christina, you need to catch yourself before you hit the wall. You just, you need to catch yourself because it's going to be even harder to get yourself out of it when you do hit the wall. 
Um, so I would say that I haven't perfected it yet, um, especially with the market that we're having right now. I feel like we're going nonstop. Um, and that's okay. And that's what, it, I mean, you need work. We need work. Um, but I think that you really need to notice yourself and how you're feeling. And if you need to just not go into the office on Monday and Tuesday, because, you know, everything just went into contract, just take the day for yourself. Um, because you will hit a wall. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I have not perfect. I haven't figured that one out yet. I don't know. Um, I just know that I need to do better at it. Um, so in regards to finding time for fun, just like figure you out and, you know, if you need to take a day and just do you, just do you. Um, my daily schedule, so I wake, uh, I work out five times a week. Um, and that's one thing that I've kept in my schedule that keeps me sane. Um, so I do get up around, depending on the day, like 5.30 or 7.30, depending on whichever day that it is. Um, I check my hot sheet. And then I actually will lead gen. I probably don't start at nine because I think I'm waking people up. <laughs> Even though everyone tells me that that's not true. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's true. Um, so I'll lead generate probably in the afternoon. Um, I'm not as consistent as I probably should be, but I am always talking to past clients. So whether or not it's like a deliberate, like, hey, you want to sell or buy a house? I'm always checking in with past clients, like, probably to a fault, but I also talk to them every day. They've just become friends of mine. Um, so it doesn't like when I'm lead generating, it doesn't feel like I'm lead generating, right? Because if I'm calling someone that I don't know, it's usually because someone else gave me their contact information. So I have a way roundabout way to get to them. Um, and then I'm Mondays and Tuesdays are obviously all slower because we know that everything just went in a contract. And then Wednesday, I really work on my business. Um, all of like the little gritty, little details like emails and stuff like that I'll do on Wednesdays. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I am uh, showing houses all the time. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, do you have any other advice for, um, I guess, lead gen uh, sources outside of past clients? Um. So kind of what I've been focusing on right now, especially since first time home buyers are struggling, I don't want more of them. Um, so what I've actually been doing is going back through my database to like old open houses or other people that I have, um, that I have met, like that are kind of older and they're like, Hey, whenever you like find a house that like is a ranch that works for me and just let me know. And like, I'll buy it. Right. And all those people that we talk to, we kind of like take for granted. We're like, yeah, they're never going to buy anything. Um, I've actually been focusing on that, them a little bit more just because I know that they have a house to sell and more likely than not, they can afford to buy. Um, right. Whether or not it's a bridge loan or something like that, or they just have cash on hand because, you know, they're older and they've been around. Right. So I've been focusing on that really well. Um, so go back, back through like, any open houses that you did or any old calls where there may be older people um, and see if you can get deals that way. Thanks. Yeah. I'm just responding to this really quick. That's okay. Um, actually, I'll just say it instead of typing it now that you're done. Um, so I just went through guys and it actually looks like he didn't send um, the one for this week. So I'll send him a message to make sure that we get that out. So if you didn't get a coaching form, um, it's because it wasn't sent. <laughs> Um, all right. So that was all of the questions that, um, Josh had provided. Um, we are going to open it up to questions. Um, but I did want to touch, uh, real quickly, if Christina, you can speak to, uh, your social media and what you're doing with social media. I think you're a little bit more present with Instagram than you are Facebook. Um, just give us kind of a snippet of how you run your social or if you have any sort of schedule. Um, so I do both of them equally. I just think that Instagram is the younger crowd. So they expect you to post more often than Facebook. Um, so that's the reason why I do. Um, I personally don't have a schedule. I just kind of, I guess I, we, my age group, we started with it. So we just kind of are used to use that using it. Um, I 
I don't think about it too hard. And I think that's where people struggle is because like, well, what content should I post? Just go about your day and like, then like just whatever you're doing, just post it. They just, they want to know that you're an actual person. Um, so I post more about my life than I post about real estate. Um, or when I'm posting out real estate, I try to make it more of a success story for my clients and not about me. Um, because it's not, it's not about me. I want, I want to celebrate my clients. And I think that people take to that more if it's not always about me, 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 me. Oh, I did this or I did that. You know, it's like, oh, these people just moved into their dream house. It doesn't matter how much I sold the house for or whatever. Um, so I really try to focus it more on my clients. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have any specific? I, I just do social. I don't even think about it really. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know if anybody has any specific questions in regards to that because I might be, I might get you a better answer. No, that's all right. You do, um, do you do any social ads like through command? Do you run I, any? I do. So all of my listings um, will get an ad through command. So I spend $30 for every listing to go, go through. Um, I do receive a lot of leads from it. I will say that since I'm only one person, I don't respond to all of them in a timely fashion, which is what I'm actually trying to work on now. Um, because I think that if, I figured that out. I would do, be doing a lot more business, um, but it's just, they're coming in nonstop. So um, I do do those. I also do, I just did a brand um, brand awareness one as well and did a video for that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say every listing you get definitely post on there. You definitely get a good amount of leads. I have a, a question for myself. Um, do you have any advice for getting people like, so for Facebook specifically, like they won't let you see any of the actual like information, like any of the insights, unless you've reached a hundred followers. I have been trying so just a hundred. I went from 35 to 67 in like a week and a half. So I was okay. like, yes, I'm well on my way. And now I'm stuck at 67. Um, and like, I keep getting just like all this week, like every day I'm getting like your page has three new views, your page has five new views, your page mm -hmm. has one, but I don't know who it is because I don't have a hundred followers. So I can't get those insights, but I'm like, okay, they're looking at my page, but they're not clicking they the don't get like blind enough to. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, how do I, I thought about maybe doing like a small, just like a super small giveaway, like, you know, putting it out on my personal page of, you know, getting people to get over to my business page and liking it and doing a small giveaway. I'm just like, can I just get to a hundred followers? <laughs> I want to know this information. That's hilarious. So I would say I don't focus a ton on my business page because I know that people don't see it. I guess there's like, there's new algorithms coming up all the time. And it's like one in so many chances that they actually see your business page. Um, so I've just treated my personal page, like my business page. Um, so sometimes it's not even getting to, um, it's sparkle. I'll follow you there. Good. Good. Yes. Teamwork. Thanks, sparkle. <laughs> um, so honestly, if there's something that I think that should specifically go on my business page, it's also going on my personal page. Um, so i actually feel like, and I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I get way more deals than my, on my personal page than I do my business page. I just have my I just have my business page to like look like I'm an actual business. So like if someone ever looks me up like and wants to see that I'm still a realtor, they know that I'm posting there, right? They see that I'm still in business. Um, but I would definitely say that I get way, way, way more business from, on my personal page. So I wouldn't stress about it too much. I guess isn't my point. Just focus on your personal. Page. Just it just drives me. I know. Just it just drives me crazy when I get those notifications. I like last night amazing. it was like three new views, and I'm like, well, who's looking at my page? I know. <laughs> I, know I know. All right. Um, I think that's everything that we um, have to ask. Does anybody out there have questions that you'd like to ask Christina? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, I guess the first one is what are some of the things that you're including in offers to get them accepted Okay. just because of the market's so tough. And then my next question is um, like, what has your strategy been for sellers? I'm sorry. It's my dog. That's okay. 
um, I have a doctor. strategy been for sellers um, who need to obviously buy their next home, but it would be, you know, contingent on the sale of their current home? Like, what does okay. the timing and strategy and all that look like to make that work? So for offers, um, I, let's, let's see how to say so for list for buyers, um, I'm trying to think about things that I do. Let's say, for example, if they're putting 20 to 15 for 15 to 20% down, I will add that in there um, into the additional terms just to let them know that they're very strong buyers. Um, I do do a letter sometimes, but I also know that they're not exactly working right now. <laughs> um, so, but sometimes I include it just if I kind of feel the vibe when I'm in the house. Um, I do have my lender call every agent that I write a listing on or write an offer on um, to tell them that they verify income, all their credit, all that kind of stuff. So I do have my lender call for each call each agent um, that we write on. Um, offers, I have a pretty creative way of doing gaps if you can't do a gap or if it's a smaller gap. Um, so I will put in there, like in the event that the property does appraise. So like, let's say, we, you know, in the event the property does not appraise for the purchase price, we make it, you know, make up the difference by $15,000. But and then I put, but in the event that the property does appraise for the agreed upon purchase price, buyer will gap the different, or will gap, will pay up to $3,000 of seller closing costs. So it's like guaranteed money, whichever way happens, either way. Um, so that's one thing that I've come up with. Um, let's see. Sometimes, well, I've done one where, um, I noticed like one issue in the house that I would really like to have looked into. So I just acknowledge that and then waive the rest of the rent, the inspection. So like, for example, I saw a really bad, well, it was a bad sump pump. Um, so I put in there that we would have a sump pump inspection, and just get a quote for a new sump pump, but would not have any other further inspections done just because I did not feel comfortable with the sump pump. Um, I have been paying for, as a closing gift, for the home warranty. So that's how I've been doing it, unless you just completely waive it, but I've been paying for it because I don't, you know, I think that's a nice gift to have. Um, let's see. I've been putting down at least five grand in earnest money. I mean, as because it's not like I always tell my clients, it's not additional funds. It's not like you're coming up with more money. Just let's put it down ahead of time and I'll just move it to your closing costs and down payment anyways. Um, so I'm putting a lot more of that down. Um, I really like doing rent backs. So I would say that that's also a thing for sellers that I've been doing a lot of are rent backs. Um, and I'm actually asking what the current owner's their current mortgages and my clients can eat the rest <laughs> um, just because of how tough it is. Cause instead of going in and being like, Hey, here's our mortgage payment. That's what we're going to want. Um, I'll just ask them what they're currently paying um, and put that in there. Um, hmm, I think that's, are there any other questions about the offers that maybe I missed? Um, someone had mentioned this the other day um, yeah. and I just didn't know if anyone had, had tried to use this. They did the earnest money. Um, it was like five thousand dollars, but uh, put in the terms and conditions that the earnest money would be credited to the seller at closing. Mm -hmm. um, like I That's said, I haven't heard of anybody using it other than this one, <laughs> this one person. Yeah, but you definitely do that. Yeah, yeah I, I could see That's that working. I mean, too. I mean, I guess well. It's not like it makes a difference because you're you're crediting it anyways to yourself. So it's like bringing in additional five grand. Yeah. So I don't. The terminology may be harder to do. Yeah. Especially if it's like if it's if it's cash, they're not going to care where the money's coming from, right? So then the earnest money is easily can get credited um, back to the seller. So I don't know. Mm, it's the same thing. You're just like making it more. You might be making it more difficult. Yeah, yeah, because it's like then you're bringing the other five thousand dollars anyways that you're going to bring for the down payment. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I feel like 
at least this is something that I try to think about too, when I'm doing the terms and conditions is, and like you say, like it might be harder verbiage wise, like for it not to get too confusing for the seller to even understand. Cause I feel like if they, if it gets to a point where they're not even understanding what's happening, they're going to be like, nope. Well, and a lot of realtors I've learned sometimes can't explain it appropriately. So the more dumbed down way that it could be, the better, honestly. I don't mean that bad. Like, it's just like, let's not make it as complicated. And let's just say the 5,000, we will credit the seller's $5,000. If they think it's the earnest money, they might not understand that they're getting additional money because sometimes sellers are like, oh yeah, I get, I get the earnest money, right? Because I get that question all the time. Well, what are, what are the chances that I get the money? And I'm like, it's like slim to none. I tell my sellers it's a wash. Yeah, that's not your money. <laughs> your money, it's just not. Um, yeah. So I make it say, make it simpler than harder. Um, and then in regards to things that I'm putting in for sellers to get them moved out, I am doing extended rent backs. Um, I'm asking for it so then I have to, so we can close and then I have the money from the closing to go help them buy something else. Um, and then making you know making it contingent on suitable housing. I've been doing that. Um, I have a lot of new builds. I did a lot of new builds. I know that it's a little bit harder now just because they're capping how many contracts they're putting together in one subdivision. So I do know that that's tough, but I've been doing a lot of those. Um, and also, honestly, I had a lot of people just go rent. Like, they're just like, I'm just going to go enjoy a pool in an apartment complex for a little while. And honestly, I'm like, doesn't sound awful. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's fine. Like, you know, cause we do know that some people can't afford what they would want next. So sometimes it's not always a bad thing. It's like, you can only push so much. Like it's kind of nice that they don't need to go buy something else because we do have other clients that are like in dire straits to be in one. So sometimes when they pull the apartment thing, I'm like, you do that. Can you go into a little more detail about the suitable housing contingency? what that looks like. So you're saying when you have a seller um, and you list, they're mm -hmm. putting in there that they won't close with the buyer until they find their next house? Correct. So that whole, that whole deal, so my sellers list their property and we cannot find some, somewhere for them to go with that suitable housing contingency that deal is null and void if we do not meet it. So like if we cannot find them a place to go, then that deal doesn't work. But also the conversation that I'm having is like, hey, in the chance that we don't find something, are you willing to do a double move, right? Like I am having that conversation. Obviously we prefer to have found them something, um, but with the contingent plus suitable housing, it's just verbiage for me to be able to get them out of selling their house in the chance that we can't find them something else. But am I having the conversation that, hey, you may have to do two moves? I am having that as well. What, uh, what kind of timeline do you put in the contract for that? For uh, suitable housing? Yeah. Um, I don't put one unless the buyers ask for one. <laughs> um, I just say that make it contingent upon the offer contingent upon suitable housing. And then if a seller or if a buyer comes back to me, I was like, okay, we can do that for X amount, but they're going to want the earnest money back in the event that we don't find something. Um, then that's fine, but I'm not putting a timeline on it for my sellers until I'm asked. So like, what's like, I guess a realistic time frame to have, I mean, what if, you know, could be like any amount of time really. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not specifying for my sellers because I want them to have as much time as humanly possible. And if the agent, if another buyer's agent isn't going to ask me for a specific amount of time, I'm in, I'm in luck, right? Cause I'm benefit. I have to look out for my clients. Um, I will say that I probably takes like a couple weeks after we go on contract. I mean, to find them something else. So then once we do find something that I'll notify the other side, Hey, we're closing in this date. Can we go ahead and close, uh, you know, right after the inspections are done and make sure that this is actually going to close we'll change your closing and move it up and then we'll close the same day. Does that make sense? So yeah. it just really depends. I mean, it just depends. I mean, who, sometimes who knows how fast or slow you can find somebody something, you know? 
I mean, I wish I had a better answer for that. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, everyone is different. I mean, I just did one and it took us three months to find something. And then I've done them before and it takes like three days after we go into contract on their house and it's a breeze. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess in the event that you're looking at like that three months, um, like, are you getting like any pushback from like the buyer's agent or anything like that? Or no? Okay. Uh, no. Uh, because the buyers have nowhere else to go. So, right. you and know, they're kind of at my beck and call, which is, I don't like, because honestly, I have more buyers than I do listings. I mean, just because of my age group. Um, so I'm always just like, yeah, whatever you want. Like you might as well give an offer or give them a contract that's blank and just like fill it in. Just like whatever you want. So that's kind of what's happening right now. Yeah. And then, so the buyers don't have really an opportunity to walk away then if they've already agreed to the suitable housing, uh, contingency in the contract so i've been so let's say if i'm on the other side of this and we want to write an offer contingent upon suitable housing i always have the conversation with the other agent um i'm a big phone call person um to get all the details right like hey so i know you're making this contingent upon suitable housing um now what is what is your game plan? What if you can't find them anything? I always say that, well, what if you can't find them anything? Is this transaction actually going to go through? And m most all agents say to me, I've had the conversation with them. They're, they will be making a move. It's just, I don't know when. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, you tell your clients that you're, you know, taking a risk of sitting here and waiting for them to find something. Could we, could we not close on this thing? Yeah, we, we could not. Um, but they're, they're made aware of that. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else have any questions? I just have one question. So let's say you have over 500 people in your owner base. How do you stay in contact with those people more frequently? Do you send like campaign emails or? So I actually kept Market Leader. If anybody was here um, like a year ago before we had all switched over to command. Um, so I really liked the email campaigns that were created in Market Leader for Keller Williams agents. I see, I see Chelsea shaking her head. It is really, really nice. Oh. They're already made. Um, there's holidays. There's literally everything that you need. Um, so I actually decided to keep it. So I pay 75 bucks a month and have two emails that go out for sure every month, um, one at the beginning and one at the end of the month. And then if there's a holiday, so I do touch them at least two to three times a week, two to three times a month with emails. Um, and then I do like any past clients, I still have them on my searches, like for their neighborhood. So they still get like weekly emails from me in regards to how their neighborhood is doing. Uh, and it's not the neighborhood nurture, it's just like in the MLS that I keep going. Um, so they're seeing information that way. And I know that they're looking at it because it notifies me when they look at it. Um, I do a lot of handwritten cards, handwritten cards are my thing. Um, I'm also very much on top of people's lives. I guess it's just because of social media in me. But like, I know anybody's major events. I send flowers to the hospitals if my clients have kids or their friends have kids or like anything like that. I'm, I, it's the personal touch that I think keeps me going. Um, and I do make an extra effort to do all of that. So I would say my clients at least they hear from me four to five times a month, for sure, for sure. And so with the 500, I would just get a really nice, whether or not I use command and you create all the emails or you do market leader, just so that your name is popping up, just because everybody knows a realtor, right? So even if they don't open your email, at least your name is popping up in that subject line <laughs> twice a month. Um, I'm like, I don't even care if they don't open it. They just need to see my name. They just need to like see it. And that's, that's all I need to do. So I would check out Market Leader if you're not a fan of the command emails. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Anyone else? Nothing? Sparkle has to have something for me. Is Sparkle even here? 
She's Marvel here. helped me big time this weekend. Yes, I enjoyed it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. I was not ready for those overlapping showings, though. <laughs> I was not ready. It was more like the open house. One of them, it was just people everywhere. Yeah. I know. It's getting back to normal, which is like a good thing and a bad thing, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Smart Thank me you. showings this weekend, and she was like, oh, my goodness. There are people everywhere. <laughs> It was funny. It was great. We did I'm overlapping like, showings for our own home and crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's how it was before. I mean, that's how it was before. And now it's just even worse because there's more of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because all my clients are like, I'm I, like, what happened to how it was before? I'm like, I know I miss it. But now that it's happening, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, I know I need it in the house, but I kind of like having my own space. But. Yeah. Give me my yeah, own me private too. 30 I minutes. I think it takes away from the experience for the buyer yeah, I guess I'm just used to it because that's how it was when I got in the business I don't know any different um you know what I mean that's how it was we always were in there all together I kind of I think I got spoiled though with having them by ourselves I was like oh I kind of like this I'm not rushed <laughs> but well thanks everybody if anybody ever needs anything I mean let me know um I'm always here to help so yeah thank you you're welcome great session I'm glad I'm not much of a talk. Well, I'm a, I'm a huge talker. I just <laughs> don't like talking about myself. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye.